Hey everyone, my name's Braden. We're going to go over how to filter a panda's data frame, and with that, let's get started. For our examples today, we're going to be using data from the website 538. I'll leave a link in the description below to where you can access that data. To get started, what we'll do is import pandas and read in our data. So I have it saved as a CSV file on my desktop. It's called recent grads. And we'll look at the shape of the data frame. So we see that there are 173 rows and 21 columns. So let's just take a peek at the first five rows of this data frame. So we can see that this data frame is about college majors and their employment afterwards. We have the major, the total number of students in that major, and then the number of men and women, the category that that major is in, the proportion of women in that major, and the number of employed, part-time, full-time, and some other interesting variables that we could explore. For our purposes though, we'll just focus on this few columns here. The first technique that we're going to go over is called a Boolean mask. How this works is that we specify what conditions we want to be included in our data frame if it's true. For example, if we wanted to look at all the social science majors, we could do that. So I'm going to create a new data frame called DF1 to stand for our first method. So what we want to do is return our data frame where the data frames column major category is equal to social science. So anywhere where our data frames major category is social science, anywhere where that's true, those rows will be returned and we're saving that into our new data frame DF1. Oh, and it looks like uh, I spelled social wrong. And I've also copied a little bit of code here. This just shows us the shape of our new data frame and prints off the head. So now we can see that we have nine rows in this new data frame where each of the major categories is social science. Let's say you wanted to filter your data frame on more than just one condition where the major category is social science and the share of women is greater than or equal to 0.5. So what we can do is a similar process we just did, except for this time we're going to create a variable called filter criteria that contains the criteria we want to filter on. This is just to keep our code more readable. So we're gonna say df major category is equal to social science. And notice how I put this first set of criteria in parentheses. And then we're going to use and. And then in Python, we normally use and to represent and. However, in pandas, it's a little bit different. We use the ambersands instead. And then for or, we would use the pipe operator that looks like this. So here we want and. And then we're going to put our second set of criteria in parentheses as well. And that's going to be everywhere where the column df share women is greater than or equal to 0.5. So now that we have our criteria, we can create our new data frame. So we're gonna call this df1m for multiple conditions or criteria. And we want this new data frame to be equal to everywhere our data frame is true based on our filter criteria. So see how this is a lot easier to read than if we were to try and cram all of this information into our data frame here. There's a lot going on in this line, so I like to break it up like this. And once again, I copied a little bit of code to print the shape of our new data frame and the head of our new data frame. So let's run that. And we see now we have five rows returned, all of our columns. Uh, we can see our major category is social science like we asked for and our share of women is above 0.5 just like we wanted. Sometimes it's easier to write out the category information that we don't want. So that's kind of confusing with the 
double negative. So if we wanted everything except for major category is equal to social science and the share of women is greater than 0.5, we can do that easily by reversing our data frame information. So let's call this new data frame DF1 OP for opposite because we're going to use the opposite of our filter criteria and we want this DF1 op to equal DF where our filter criteria is the opposite. So we can change this by using the little squiggly line here. It's called a tilde. For me, it's right below the escape key on my keyboard. And what it does is take the opposite condition. So for example, we know that true is equal to true. But if we were to use the tilde here, it'd be false because it's saying the opposite of true is equal to true, which the opposite of true is false. So it, this expression evaluates to false. So if we wanted everything opposite from our filter criteria, we can just use the tilde there. And we'll want to look at our shape and head of our data frame and run that. And we see that we get 168 rows returned. In the last example, we had five rows returned, which is equal to a total of 173, which is the number of rows of our total data frame, which makes sense because we want our total to be 173, just like the original data frame. So moving on to method two, we can use the lock method or loc. So let's say df2 for our second method is equal to df loc. Now we're gonna use our same filter criteria. And then we're going to print the shape and the head. So here we see we get five rows returned, just like we did in our last example using the Boolean mask. So why would you use this loc method? One convenient reason is we can return specific columns when we use this method. So let's say, df2 is equal to df loc. We're going to use our filter criteria and we want to return the column part time. And we'll just look at the head of that. Oh, we want to look at df2 head. So here we just have the column part time, which is now a series. And we can also include additional columns. So let's say our columns is equal to part time sample size and total. We can say df2. Now we can say df2 is equal to df.loc filter criteria and return our columns there. So then we return just the columns and just the rows that we want. So that's one benefit of using the loc method instead of the Boolean mask like that we previously showed. For our third method, we're going to use df query. So df3 is equal to df.query. And this is where it gets a little bit different. So we're gonna use the double quotation marks here. Now we're gonna say, major category. So we don't have to say DF major category. We just say our column is equal to, and we're gonna use the single quotation marks here, social science and share women is greater than or equal to 0.5. If we didn't want to create a new data frame, but we just wanted to write over our original data frame, we can specify here, in place is equal to true. But since we're creating a new data frame, I'm not going to do that. And let's print the shape and the head of our data frame. So here we see five rows are returned and they're all social science, just like in our previous examples. So these first three methods can be used for all the same purpose. We can filter our data frame on one or multiple criteria. So which of these methods should we use? For me, I usually use the Boolean mask, the first method, if I'm not concerned about what columns are returned. 
if I want all the columns to be returned. If I want specific columns to be returned, I'll use the loc method, the second method. And I never really use the query method, but it is available to you. Let's also look at the speed of each of these methods. So we'll run this. Right here, I'm just using the time it magic method here, and then using each of the methods that we went over already to see which one is the fastest. All right, so we can see that the mask, Boolean mask and the loc method are pretty much the same, but the query method seems to be the slowest. All right, let's move to method four. We're gonna use iloc this time. So we can filter based on the rows and columns. We specify the index location of the rows and the columns. I usually don't use this method, but it is available to you. There may be certain instances where this is the most convenient. So let's say df4 is equal to df.iloc. So once again, iloc is using the index locations. So we're going to return the first 10 rows and we want columns two through six. If we wanted just columns two and six, what we could do is pass this as a list and change this to a column. This will give us just columns two and six. And the previous way gives us up to but not including six. And we'll print the shape and head of our data frame. So we see we get 10 rows returned and our four columns. So that would be columns at index position two, three, four, and five. For method five, we can use the loc method again. So let's say df5 is equal to df.loc. This time, since we're using the value names, what we're gonna want to do is say df.index, and we want the first 10 index values rather than the index position. And we can use the column names this time rather than the index position. So we'll look at major and major category, and we will print the shape and head of our data frame. So we have 10 rows just like before and our major category. This method can be particularly helpful if we have a named index. So let's set the index of DF5 to equal the major. And we will look at the head of our new data frame. So here we see now the index rather than 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. is the name of our major column. So now what we could do is say we want to return the rows and I already copied the rows that I want. Petroleum engineering, mechanical engineering and then we want the columns to equal major and major category. I will say df5 is equal to df5.loc rows and calls. And as usual, we'll print the shape and the head of our data frame. And it looks like I put row instead of rows here. So let's run that again. Now we get a two by two data frame with our major, major category, and our index here. So this can be helpful if we have a named index. So moving on to method six, we're going to be filtering out missing data. So first let's make a new data frame. We'll say df6 is equal to df copy. And we'll look at how many missing values we have in each column. So df6 dot is null dot sum. And we see that there are some missing values. There's one missing value in the total column, men column, women column, and the share women column. So to remove those missing values, what we can do is df6.dropNA. And we can specify in here in place is equal to true if we want those changes to be permanent. However, I don't want to because I'm gonna show one other example. But what this will do 
is return our data frame with those rows with missing data removed. If we wanted to just drop the missing values in a single column instead of the entire data frame, we can do so using a Boolean mask. What we'll say is df6 is equal to df6, where the specific column that we want, so df6 total, is not null. So we want to return everything in the total column that isn't missing. And we can make sure that that works by saying df6 dot is null and getting the sum for each column. So let's run that. So we see that the missing value from the total column is removed. The missing values from those other columns are also removed. And that's because they were in the same row. If the missing value was in a different row, in a different column, then those wouldn't have been removed. And finally, let's look at returning everything that is missing. This can be helpful if we're trying to figure out if there are certain categories or groups that have more missing than other categories or groups. So to return all of the categories that are missing in a specific column, we can call that column and ask for everything that is null using a Boolean mask. So if we run that, we get the one row that has the missing values returned. If we wanted to look at the rows that contain missing values in the entire data frame instead of just a column, what we can do is just call dot any and set axis to equal one. And I want to actually call this on the entire data frame instead of just the total column. That's why we got an error. So as I was saying, this isn't the greatest example because there was only one row of missing data. But this method would return all of the rows that contain missing values across any of the columns. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please consider supporting me by subscribing and giving the video a like. If you have any other questions, please post those in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to them. Thanks for watching.